Still don't like that bitch. I don't like that she talked to us. I know. It's, I don't like it. I don't like who, it. Who told her to talk? I don't know. They should have enough. This is very new. And, and they chose they chose the weirdest voice. Like, at least with Google, like Google Meets, it's like a it's recording by saying you or that's Microsoft Teams. It's recording by saying that means you agreed to be recorded. You just hit right. okay. You and move on with your life. Dismiss it. But no, this one don't care. And then it's some weird recording in progress. I feel like though it's that one lady who does all the voices for like voicemails and she's black so I say let's keep her working but still I don't want to hear it uh, okay oh but hi y'all you know we're recording right we are <laughs> that is why we're talking about this yes hi world hey oh my hey. goodness this is life 401 advanced shenanigans and that was michelle it was there. that's drea who didn't remember that we were recording after we had just pressed record but it's okay we're gonna let it's her ride. countdown <laughs> you did you did you did the countdown nope nope didn't remember at all i was just talking um you know how they'd be like, you had one job, except you did your job. I did my job. I did it well. I had no follow up, though. <laughs> it's it's like when you're you're in you're in school and like you cram for a test, you pass the test, but ask you anything that you, you don't know a damn thing. I don't know a damn thing. I got an A. That's what I do now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was. All of that stuff was in like temporary short term memory, and I went to sleep and it was gone. Gone. So, so I didn't go classes. to sleep before the test. <laughs> yeah. So, so many classes like that. Anyway, how y'all doing? Y'all all right? Y'all dead? I hope they're not dead. Who knows? Maybe the apocalypse happened by the time this came out. Holy shit. Right? I mean, no, I, look. I'm going to be very honest. I've recently seen this and I said I was going to say something to somebody. I just didn't. Every time I see these like preppers who are like, it's going to be 20, this is me, 2043, and I didn't get the vaccine. And it's like everybody's zombies and they're like loading the shotgun. I want to be a zombie. I never want to survive the apocalypse. No. I I don't know what to do after that. Like, could I do it? Probably. But do I necessarily want to? No. Make me a zombie. Make me a zombie. I'm doing my own casting, God. Put me as a zombie. Because I... You know, I would... So I would I would want to be one of the ones that are just neutralized. Like, you know, they do like the, the wave mm-hmm. and you turn into ash. I just want to be one of those people. Yeah knock me out i don't want to be the survivor no i don't that and i don't trash. it does and i don't want to be a survivor like my whole like my family survives and then i'm the one that gets sick and now my poor mama sister got to kill me like just let me go and you know what that's why you don't live with them so they ain't got to be the ones to put you down some stranger will pulls you down okay you got a point it'll be a rando it's, who's taking me out? No member of my family. If it if it comes to that, now do I have a contingency plan if some things go down? Yes, like technically, do I I think about survival surviving? Yeah, but realistically, I not not technically. I don't really want to. Not even technically. You do think about these things. You think about the the number of exits in a restaurant sure you like do. to know yeah i want to know we can get out you have a plan about how you're going to get to the nearest base just in case like yeah no you you be thinking about this I do but also like if it really came down to it i don't want to like, i don't want to go through all that effort I don't want to go through all that effort. 
call me lazy if you want to, but like, if it's the vaccine that takes me out. Oh, well, it's too late for me. <laughs> I'd rather have it and like not need it. You know what I mean? At this right. point. Right. And I, I was looking at the news because I'm getting old like that now. Yeah. Let's Welcome look at to the, the world. I know. Looking at the news and apparently... So this lady was like, she was in a, she was in a vaccine trial. She was like, she was telling them that and people were like, well, the vaccines are already out, but the vaccine trial she was in has been proven to be effective. And so they're using it. They're talking about using it for, for countries that can't afford the other ones uh-huh, or like for the expensive. U.S. if we get, if we get low or if they decide we need a booster shot, they can use this vaccine that's slightly cheaper. I was like, see, you got to keep with the research guys because let's be real like one the variants they're they're finding new ones every day yeah there's like a delta one out right now that's That's responsible with shit yeah for like 20 percent of the cases here right and never forget that the u.s was hoarding vaccines for a while and so was the eu of course we were. Of course they were. Yeah, because there was like America for it first, you know. So they were like, these companies are in our territories. We get first pick of vaccines. We get to buy them first. We got to make sure that all of our people have them first. But you know, as people stop trying to get vaccinated, because of course we've we're not at that threshold yet where it's like there's more people with the vaccine than who want the vaccine you know what i'm saying but like yeah we, we haven't reached we haven't reached a thing where we can start talking about herd immunity no have not no but also we are at the point where like there aren't necessarily enough americans who are willing to get it just yet for mm-hmm. us to be having this huge supply so like yeah america just bought and donated a bunch of you know vaccines to the UN but also like America's at the very same time committing all types of heinous war crimes and we are on you know a terrorism watch list thanks to our prison system and like yeah we're not great it's, it's like um it's like, like human rights hand. Vi- violations yeah it's it's um like we're one of the only places that doesn't view healthcare is a basic right or like food as a basic basic right Mm -hmm. right like how what i'm sorry but it's like this it's like a sleight of hand like like magicians Mm -hmm. they're like pay attention to my right hand so you don't see my left hand doing all this fucked up shit yeah so you know like literally in the same breath that we donated all these agnab vaccines we got put on like a human rights watch list because we don't put AC in all of our prisons. It's not a given that prisons deserve air conditioning. Like, and let's be real. I bet you, I bet you the prisons that don't have AC are in fucking Texas. Absolutely. Texas is the number one on the list. (laughs) So Texas, and, Michigan, and New Mexico, hot places. Now Michigan is Arizona, not as dry, but Arizona dry hot. They be having hundred degree days. Like what? Georgia's, Georgia, Florida, all of us, hot as hell. No AC. Places where it gets literally today in Georgia, it was ninety some odd degrees. And somebody is in prison. Can't breathe. Can't breathe you wondering why be like oh it was a jailbreak yeah because they was hot they wanted to run they they needed outside shit it's when it's It's hot hot inside inside. get out my head (laughs) that's how i get it but that's how we get in the south sometimes you'd be like oh let me go outside because it's hot it's hot and you know like certain medications make it really hard like to regulate your temperature, to regulate your own body temperature. Yeah. And like, they'd be like, well, we got fans. Well, fans only do so much. Fans circulate the same hot air. You got nothing but heat in your house. 
that fan is gonna blow hot air. Yes. It's the reason that your grandma used to say in or out. Don't let all my good air out. Don't let all my good air out. I don't know about y'all grandma, but my grandma would openly just turn off the AC if we was coming in and out of the house too much. Oh, oh, honey. She would just turn it off and stare. And then you'd have to turn on your cousins and be like, see, it wasn't even me, grandma. It was them. <laughs> it was Hunger Games to throw your cousins outside because you wanted oh, to be yeah. inside in the cool air. <laughs> oh, so you can read your book in peace. I could read my book in peace. I want to yeah. be outside. It's Alabama. I, Shit. <laughs> I, I knew this. I knew this was was an actual story. This was no <laughs> longer hypothetical. Not, no, I I just had a recovered memory. <laughs> <laughs> so my my family house it had um, something you don't see often now. We had a, we had an AC, of course, but we also had um, an addict fan. That's nice. And That's so, a really nice thing. <laughs> yes, but being a, a young kid, it was in the hallway, right? And this is this hallway is central to everything. Mm-hmm. If you weren't in the master bedroom, you didn't have a, ba- a bathroom attached to your room. So you had to go up the hallway to go to the bathroom or go up the hallway to leave, go up the hallway to go to the kitchen, the den, go out. And the fan was in the ceiling of the hallway. And you turn it on and it's like, it sounds like a monster. Yes, it is. And then it gets a giant fan and it gets it going. And what it does is it literally like pulls all the hot air out. Mm-hmm. It blows it out the house. Yes. But being a little kid, you know how to like, um, was it Home Alone where he's afraid of the furnace? Yes. My southern ass was afraid of the attic fan. I thought it was going to pick me up. Don't kill and, me. <laughs> and kill me. Chop me up. I've, I've been morbid a long time. I was like, it's going to be just yeah. blood all on these white walls in the hallway. And my mama's going to be mad because I got I got stuff on the walls. <laughs> Not because you cause did. Nope. Because I got. Because you done dudded up these walls. Because they were white. Well, yeah. I understand. She would be mad. <laughs> she would be mad. Our, our, our family home, the family home on, I'm mainly talking about because this is the grandmother who would openly throw us out of the house the other (laughs) grandmother was too nice to openly throw us all out of the house she'd throw my cousins out of the house because they was always there but the four of us me and my siblings we got to do whatever we liked oh yeah we only visited every so often (laughs) oh y'all were the fancy y'all were the city the city grandchildren we were i don't give a damn yes we were and happy about it one, we didn't meet them until late in life. Like, <laughs> we didn't always know them. Okay, I don't know we lived people. other places. Yeah, yeah, I was out and about. We was out and about. I think we had met, like, we had been to like one family reunion, and like they had come over to Hawaii a couple times. Just the grandparents. Yeah, no, you can't just, like two of my uncles. You can't carry all them folks. You couldn't carry them all. So, it's, like... Yeah, it's not like a family, like, vacation where everybody get in a van. Mm-mm. No, you gotta fly or you get gotta on a boat. Get one of the two. It's planes and boats. That's all we got. So, by the time I was six, that's when I really... We first started meeting them. And even then, we ain't live with them. We live states away. So... You're not doing whatever you want with me, but <laughs> you you don't you don't know me like that, ma'am. You don't know me like that. You just want me to be happy, and I appreciate you. That woman was a saint. My other grandma, the one that I'm named after, <laughs> honey was great. <laughs> but honey did not care that we did not visit <laughs> often. <laughs> honey treated us like any of the other kids. And would throw us out openly <laughs> and me. Hey, get out. Get outside. <laughs> Grandma, there ain't nothing to do. You can go feed the dogs. Literally, those dogs, I don't even think I've had rabies shots. I'm not going near those dogs. <laughs> no, like. And she didn't Grandma. have a regular AC. Like, she had like a window unit that was in one room. 
That was it. So if you oh. wanted to be in the AC room, like you had to like sit and be sh- and just shut up. Sit and read your book, you say. <laughs> sit, like when I tell you, I used to go under the pool table because for some reason we had a pool table in our living room, or she did. <laughs> And I would just sit under the pool table and hope nobody noticed me and read these books. <laughs> Did it so work that I out? could be in the AC. Sometimes. <laughs> All right. Sometimes it worked. Sometimes I got caught. Like I sent outside. You going outside it was usually, like you on death row? It was usually one of my cousins and one of my brothers being like, Nish, come play. We need another player. I don't want to I want to y'all. I don't know. <laughs> what made you think I wanted to go out there with you? Did I it go is, when you first went out there? Like it is hot outside. I'm not running around with y'all in the heat. Ew. <laughs> no. Like if you notice now, I still don't run around with y'all in the heat. <laughs> no, like and my family knows better. That's they real. know better than to ask me are you going to how about this so like when you were talking about you want to go to six legs i was like good lord okay i'm a, i'm gonna go with you but it's not gonna be no all day thing oh no no we i mean we will be stopping frequently to go into places that have air correct and frankly like i said it but like we're not going anytime soon it's way too hot to be out there yeah like it's too hot to be at an amusement you wanna you wanna wait and go during christmas because they be open during christmas i don't know about christmas i was like maybe august maybe we can go august late september okay because i'm gonna tell you august be hot too and you know it august be hot but august is hot enough that like we could go to the water side okay September, I ain't going to nobody's water side. Not unless it's hell hot. Okay, great. All right. We gonna buy the cups that you get the free refills. Absolutely. Because they be they be big. Not that we ever going back, but they be big. They be and big. I will and put I can other use things. it all day. Yeah, and I will put other things in them. Oh, I'm bringing alcohol. Like you can be like, hold on, hold my hold. I mean, they gonna have alcohol because it's because it's, they know that adults need alcohol to do these things. But also, y'all yeah. expensive. So if you think I'm not bringing my own water bottle with some alcohol in it, y'all great. That's why you my friend. I'm gonna keep you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna keep you. What What are we talking about today? Because we've been just. We've been all over, but it is summer. It's hot. And you know who the hottest people was? Slaves. You know they was real hot. <laughs> hot <laughs> all the time. <laughs> is that a good segue? <laughs> no. 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 It was a bit racist, but we're going to go with it. Yeah. And-, <laughs> and let's talk about, so language is important. How do you feel about people who call people slaves versus enslaved people? Okay, so I know it is to be in enslaved people. However, comma, I tend to start talking and go with the vernacular I was raised with, which, which is slaves. slaves. However, I will do my best to make sure we're referring to them as enslaved people because they weren't always slaves they didn't you know yeah they weren't always slaves and they were more than that that was their way more Mm -hmm. that was their forced occupation for a while yes yes quite a while quite a while you know hundreds of years i know you are descendant from enslaved people i am also descendant from enslaved people so yeah and and while i don't know everything about some of them i know they lived full and rich lives as much as they could so yeah i i I don't know where do you land on in the camp of what to call um i'm kind of like you so like in my mind and my like evolved mind 
these are like calling them slaves make them sound like they're a different type of species or something Mm -hmm. but they are not um but growing up in the south and learning about the history of my people they were called slaves just like i don't do it now but it took me a long time to refer to indigenous people as indigenous people and not indians yeah you know what i mean it's something you have to work at often when you were raised in a different culture it's the same argument i use with people who be like oh now i gotta learn new pronouns and now it's they and them and he was is now a she and it if you do the work even in a small amount people tend to appreciate it yeah like if you bother to learn new pronouns you just just do it just do it you know or and and you know titles change titles change just like you go from you go from miss to mrs or you go from miss to doctor like you're gonna want people to to recognize your shit i told you know i come from a military family so my Mm -hmm. number one thing is to be like so when you rank up you still accept when people call you by the wrong rank or do you correct them right do you want them to put some respect on your rank how is that any different from it's not right it's a title change people do those all the time they do they do anywho sorry we we went on a tangent but just a little bit so you guys i don't know when you're listening to this no yeah um but right now it is um june in the year of our lord 2021 (laughs) yes and uh a lot of things happen in June. You know, we talked about the the last time we were here, we talked about Pride because June is Pride Month. But something else that's really um, near and dear to my heart, I don't know about Drea, but it's near and dear to my heart, um, is... I don't care about him. No, I'm... <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. Um, near, <laughs> it's, it's something that's really important to me because I actually kind of grew up celebrating it is Juneteenth. I did not grow up celebrating it, but also still care about Juneteenth. Yeah, it has, it has like family significance for me because my auntie was very like, you know, like black history is 365. And so we didn't wait. Yeah, we didn't wait till February to start learning stuff. Like we were learning stuff. So sometimes we're talking about stuff and people are like you knew about the 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 Tulsa yes Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Rosewood too Mm -hmm. how about the one that happened here in Georgia or the Mm -hmm. one that happened in Chicago all these massacres but you know all of them all of them or you know the the slave graveyard in New York like yeah uh uh-huh mm-hmm there the the wrongdoings against enslaved people are abundant and so yeah there's a lot that we could learn yeah but for us we never grew up talking about uh, it we did you know of course black history month and we did learn black history throughout the year but for us it was one of those things of like we needed to find the pockets of black people in whatever community we were in so the way that our our family kind of embraced black culture was was through church for us in a lot of ways like you know it it's hard to make black friends on a brand new base but you know where you know we can probably find some the baptist church let's go to the black baptist church and i bet you we can meet a couple other people (laughs) yeah and you'll find out oh you 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 on that base me too you know yeah that's fair and I recognize the privilege that I have of like living with people who look like me all the time. Yeah. So yeah. But that being said, 
you know, whether you are just now learning about it or you've always known about it, Juneteenth does hold a, you know, particular spot in history, especially in the history of this nation. I know internationally it has started being like recognized a bit, but mm -hmm. at least in, in the U.S., we should, you know, put some respect on her name. Yeah. And <laughs> I just, wait, wait, I just, did you put an H in the West? The U.S. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so what we're not going to do, Stewie Griffin, exactly. we're not doing that. <laughs> we're not saying QS? No. No. The United States. Ooh, stop it. <laughs> ooh, ooh. Oh, it's great. There's, like an that. English, <laughs> there's an English teacher out there who is so pissed. I hate with me. you. I hate <laughs> me. <laughs> And it's even worse because you know better. Then yes. you're pissed with you. Yes. I know better. I choose not to do better. Okay. Oh, my God. So, anyway. So, let's talk a little bit about what Juneteenth, like, is about. Because everyone doesn't know. So, we're going to learn you something today. We're going to learn you something. But before we can get to Juneteenth, we kind of have to start at the beginning. Well, in the it's beginning. very big place to start. When you learn to do math, it's one, two, three. When you learn to sing, it's do, re, mi. Are you having fun? I am. It's a sound of music. <laughs> I know what it is. I, I, I was 100% aware of what it was. But, you know, that historical significance is not what we talk about today. You don't want to talk about Nazis? That's fine. Uh, okay. <laughs> Not today. Okay. Not today. Right. Are we talking about, are we going back to the Fertile Crescent? Should we start we there? Wanna, no. You want to start there? We'll be here all day. We will and, literally be all here. Be here and all even, day. Even our diehard fans are going to be like, girl, I did not listen to that eight hour episode. And <laughs> right. then you had to go to work. Like, what the hell were you doing? Right. Why Man. are we talking about cuneiform? <laughs> right. I don't know. I don't know. Anywho. Look, if you want to learn about all of that type of stuff, just go read this book. It's called Guns, Germs, and Steel. Okay? Great. It's by Jared Diamond. I had to read it when I was in the 10th grade, and it was the most boringest book, but it tell you all about that stuff. It talk about out of Africa and all that good stuff. Anyway. We are going to start at the beginning of the U.S. I'm sorry. Sure. At, the, at the beginning you of the did U.S. It I'm you sorry. <laughs> There's no H. There is no H. I try, I fixed it. I fixed it. The beginning of the U.S. You just, uh, you just you made a different uh, problem. Shut up. Um, Carry on. Which would be <laughs> what? July 4th, 1776? 1776. Sorry. Um, Clearly, we're Hamilton fans. Right. Pardon um, me. Are you wearing Burr, Burr sir? sir? <laughs> and then well, you sure. say, <laughs> it that depends who's asking. <laughs> yes. I was getting Sorry. there. Carry Sorry. on. My bad. My bad. <laughs> talk, let's, let's talk about the U.S. without the musical. Because it was not as it's not as fun. It's as not as music. fun without the music. Although if you're in, you want to know it with the music, Hamilton, great show. Some of it is fictional. Could be honest with you, but not a ton. Anywho, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you'd be surprised how much of it isn't. Um, yeah, some of the most fucked up parts aren't. Definitely not. But you know, most people identify. Independence Day in America as July 4th, 1776. However, mm -hmm. comma, that is not necessarily when we were free from, you know, British rule. It is not necessarily when, like, niggas was able to start doing whatever they wanted. Like, it was really a yeah. bunch of, right, like, it was just a bunch of, like, 
rioters who got together and was like, I'm tired of just protesting. You know what? Fuck it. We don't even belong to you anymore. We're our own people. Literally. That was yeah. when we, we did the, the, what's it called? Of independence. The Declaration of Independence. Yeah. I was going to get there. <laughs> because I was about to say something completely wrong. I'd be like, Boston Massacre. No. Boston Tea Party. It was a different thing. The Boston Massacre did lead to the Boston Tea Party. Look it up. There's a whole bunch of situations around it. Yeah, man. And they were such dicks. They were such dicks. I'm not even going to get into how bad the founding fathers were. But, like, the Boston Tea Party was rude and it was racist because they definitely dressed up as indigenous people trying to throw people yes. off. So, like, they were like, we're going to do this crime. But instead of letting you know it was me I did it we're gonna dress up as the Indians as they would have called them or the red faced right. savages as they would have called them absolutely and they did it that way and also like every time I hear people nowadays when people start protesting and it turns into like oh there's some damage of property and stuff like that yes do we condemn that absolutely but like literally we started off of this is a protest and now i'm damaging your property yeah like don't forget where you came from u.s we learned it from you it's fine um <laughs> sorry I, yeah. I i'm down off the soapbox but I, I mean yeah but you were right though thank you i appreciate that support <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so, you know, 1776, a bunch of people get together from all of the colonies and basically say, you know what, we're not going to, we're not going to do this anymore with you, Britain. You be over there. We're going to be over here. We're going to be our own sovereign nation now. Yeah. So they, they wrote Britain a Dear John letter and we broke up with them. Like, Absolutely. Do you have a favorite signer like of the independent? of the, the Declaration of Independence? I don't know, but like, what's the one? It's like one, whose signature is like stupidly? Oh, John Hancock. R yeah, it's just ridiculous. It's just gigantic for no reason. Ooh, Favorite like, one on are you? Button Gwinnett. Why Button Gwinnett? I find it hilarious that his mother named him Button. And he became so important that he that signed the Declaration of Independence and is now has like four counties named after him. He was from Georgia. Well, you know, we we like we like to name things after our white supremacists. Absolutely. Button Gwinnett. Anywho. Looking at you, Grady. Mm -hmm. Looking at you, Bankhead. I love you. you. Know. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Anyway. There are several. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Again, we digress. But of course, you know, so many people feel like, oh, well, that's where we started or that's where we gained our independence. But everybody wasn't free then. And honestly, we weren't free then either. So, no. <laughs> so then, you know, the next jump would be, well, if we weren't free on July 4th and we were free six years later when we won the war. Mm -hmm. And really, we just outlasted them because they stopped giving the man money. And right. by the man, I mean the king. Yes, but. because it was a that was a fucking awful war. Um, it was. It was uh, no one was ready to be fighting in this territory, this like climate. People were freezing. They they had started running out of food. They had started eating their horses. So like now, what you doing? Because you you're depending <laughs> on the generosity of gay Prussian men to come help you. It, mm -hmm. it was a whole thing. <laughs> it was a whole thing, it America. Was. Never forget that the gays saved your ass. But, you know. They, they just keep doing it. And we just keep doing it. But anyway. It's fine. Um, <laughs> so then, okay, if it's when we won the war, then it should be September 3rd, 1783. Right. However, when's the last time you heard of anybody saying, let's celebrate September 3rd when it wasn't Labor Day? I haven't. I haven't. How many people know that that's when we won the war? I mean, probably not many because I had to look it up. So, <laughs> and you know, you be knowing your history. So I be you didn't know. So no. Um, but you know, if that's when we won, they're like, okay, well, maybe not. 
So then it becomes, okay, well, maybe when's the next thing that could have possibly given us our independence, right? What's, yeah. What's and I try to think of, I'm trying to make sure it's not, I don't think it's Juneteenth. I know it's not Juneteenth. It would have been um, after we won the, the war with Britain again right after Madison's presidency when I'm looking it up of course because do your googles mm -hmm. that reminds me of like I was on I was on Facebook just the other day and someone was talking about something and I was just like Google a simple Google search would help so many people it would change not the world. be out here right not be out here being loud and wrong and just stupid right but, you know um okay so what i'm thinking of is the war of 1812 where again we fought britain again again but we so britain was like nah run that shit back bring me my shit and it, it was really a trumped up situation that britain used as an excuse to try and like reclaim the colonies it didn't work um although they did march on washington and straight up just ruin shit there but you know it's fine it's fine it's fine yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's fine um and so then you know people start talking about the civil war right well, that's mm -hmm. the next point that would have made us everybody's free because the emancipation proclamation but like we all know the emancipation proclamation didn't even make it <laughs> free on that day i mean yeah but for, but first wait let's back up and let's talk about what oh, the civil up. war just a little bit let's talk about what the civil war was about and so now remember this part that part of the the not the part of the story about enslaved people was to get to the north then you'll be free right which was not always the case let's be honest it was not always the case not always the case half but, the time when they meant north they meant canada canada but you know we also we had the we had the people who were basically bounty hunters and they were going like to re retrieve these runaway enslaved people. And, and they um, weren't necessarily making sure that they were actually runaway enslaved people. And that they right. Weren't just they weren't just people. free of free people of color. You know what I'm saying? Um, and so the South was getting up in getting their panties in a twist because the North, they felt like the North was impeding their rights to own these slaves. To or like, own slaves. To get their, like, to get their, quote, property back. Right. Right? Because we had got to the point where slavery was not outlawed, but no place that did not have slavery could now decide that we're going to start the institution of slavery. Right. It was it was at the point where like and and honestly it came from like Wisconsin trying yeah. to become a thing. Yeah. And them being like, okay, you can be a thing, but you can't own slaves. Because no no one who doesn't currently allow for the ownership of enslaved people. Right, we're not doing it. Can add on. Like you can't just be like, now I want it as a way to boost a fledgling economy. Right, because, you know, ain't nothing like free labor. Ain't nothing like free labor. Changes the ask game. Ask your parents. Right, ask your parents. Not ask your parents. Oh, no. Okay. Um, you know I'm right. You know well, I'm right. Well, so, so, of course, you know, depending on who you're asking, secession then happened. Mm-hmm the secession happens where you know southern states begin to secede from the union so basically i ain't playing with you no more we not friends we not friends i'm not i'm not coming to your house no more and, and you can't come to my house and you can't drink my lemonade because we not friends right and and i don't i don't want to do it anymore so yeah so secession begins there's a tv show called secession 
I think it's about like royal bloodlines, though. It's oh, like who's gonna su- succeed? Su- succeed, not yeah. succeed, but like succeed to the throne. I- yeah, I think it's like one of those type of like historical drama type things. Cute. <laughs> Wow, because I was like, secession. Google was like, no, no, no. It's spelled differently. Uh, <laughs> Try again. Try again. Um, so, of course, people start seceding in 1861. Mm-hmm. And, you know, blows the whole, whole shit wide open. They elect their own president. Precedent? President. <laughs> Right. I mean, word. but also, also, once the first state succeeded, they that created a new precedent because people were like, "We can leave." Oh well, I'm gonna have to do this. Yeah, I'm gonna leave. So they exactly. set a new they set a new precedent and a new president. Correct. I wasn't wrong, and <laughs> and of course they hold elections. In all, about eleven states end up seceding from the union. Mm-hmm. Making it a whole are. thing. We looking you, at you. We in it. We here. Yeah, we, I, mm-hmm. I've seen you, yeah, assholes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you ain't right. You, you ain't, ain't right. right. You ain't right. Um, and of course, they elected Jefferson Davis as the Confederate president at the time. <laughs> Lord Jesus, girl, it was a whole thing. Um, and so, of course, it the North and the South had been battling for quite some time, pretty much since, like, America was a thing. Yeah, because they were not okay with shit. People, no. er, but, you know, you, you can't please everyone. No. So we had this declaration that said we were free, except for um, women, um, indigenous people, Enslaved people. Um, enslaved people. And um poor people. White men. Yeah, white <laughs> men without property. So like it was a really specific we free. Right. We're, it we're had free an asterisk if you are white it. and own property, because you have to do both. Yeah, you can't you can't be free at all. Like you had to do both. But carry on. Tell us about Although shout out to the wives who were out here like low key manipulating shit in the background. Cause they were always always but you know i was neither here nor there so of course confederacy becomes a thing and outbreaks the civil war because you're like because the north is like you can't just leave like and and the south is like well watch me and it's a whole thing and yeah and so keep in mind that a lot of the the places that succeeded from the union they were like port towns, mm-hmm. you know, like you're talking about Georgia, you're talking about Texas, like these are ports where people are trading. Yeah. Yes. Larger ports as well. And the, you're talking about large agricultural hubs as well. Yes. Yes. This is what, you know, you ever heard the saying, the army marches on its stomach? Like, yep. it's a thing. Yeah, and if the agriculture goes, we not okay. And the South is like, well, you're impeding on my rights and your rights to do what? My rights to own slaves. I always hate when people are like, the Civil War was about states' rights. It's like, it was states rights, states rights to, to own do... slaves. Yeah, you gotta you gotta say the whole thing. People are like, well, it was states' rights for economic freedom. Through and the ownership, ownership of, slaves. of slaves you gotta you can't get it. around it you can't exactly. get around it exactly so then it becomes a whole thing they fight yeah yada 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 <laughs> Is yeah. that i mean lots of people died um lots of people were conscripted drafted into this war because the draft was like a real thing at this point and if you think they weren't conscripting enslaved people on both sides. Oh, yes. But then check it out. In this in the South in the Confederate Army, 
enslaved people were not even really allowed to be fighters. So, like, you became the slave of the Confederate Army. Like, yeah. that's what you were doing. You were out and, here gathering food sources and things for the Confederate Army. You weren't really, yeah. you weren't fighting. Yeah, the time they had decided that they were going to, by the time they decided we need more people, they're like, well, we got these N words, you know. Right. For lack of a better term. Yeah, we got them. Right. The war was almost over because they were what? Stubborn. They were real stubborn. And you know what? The only time that conscription actually worked out in the favor of enslaved people was during the War of 1812 when the British started letting Black people fight for them and enslaved people fight for them. If you would run away to the British Army yeah, and become a soldier, then you could have your freedom that way. Mm-hmm not saying that the british are good they're shits but in that point they were slightly okay at that yeah like they at least did it right unlike the confederates and the fucking union because they weren't being great about it either but you know whatever (laughs) so two years into the civil war civil war breaks out 1861 two years later lincoln honestly was tired of seeing people die and so he was trying to figure out how to one appease the abolitionists but also cripple the confederate army or yeah confederates in general but also check out this part this is the part that's not really like well known yeah he had this meeting with his cabinet and he was like look I already made this decision and you know we can talk about strategy and all that type of stuff but this is what's happening right they had a conversation about if you do it right now when we aren't we aren't really winning it's gonna look like like you're trying to last ditch something Hail Mary right Hail Mary yeah they were like, no, you have to wait until victory is on the horizon. And so he waited. He held his coins real close. Yeah. He tucked it in his pocket. And then he did this emancipation proclamation. At which point he said, there are any of these enslaved people henceforth shall be free. Or whatever the fuck he said in old English. But, yeah, check it out, though. There's a reason why Drea earlier said that the Emancipation Proclamation did not free all the enslaved people. Because what it says is that the enslaved people living in the Confederate States are free. If you're in the Union, you know. We so, gonna get to you eventually. Yeah, we. I mean, but we can't. How how much sense would it make if y'all are the ones we're relying on enslaved people's labor to do these things? We can't. We cannot say, oh yeah, you you know you free too. Not yet. You have no. to wait. Not at all yet, because that would be too much like right. And then they proceeded to continue fighting. Because let's be real. Yeah, like that wasn't like, it, it wasn't like in the Wiz when they're like, can you feel a brand new day? No, uh-uh. No, we still fighting. <laughs> they kept fighting. Um, well in, well in, they kept fighting. Yeah. And, you know, eventually it ended a couple years after that. Like, what was it, 1865 or something like that? Where yeah. Where it ends. And yet and still, niggas won't free. <laughs> yeah. So the reason why we have Juneteenth is because we get to 1865. And it's not until Union soldiers arrive in Galveston, Texas, to tell the, the enslaved people there that they are free that we get so, to even mention it yeah like they 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 were not they were not aware right and why would they be they are living in a confederate state 
Yeah. And where the Confederacy is losing, the last thing I'm going to tell these people is I'm losing and y'all are technically free. Like I'm not yeah. telling you I'm not that telling because you that. in my mind, you know, that, that doesn't help me. And also we might win. They weren't gonna win. They I don't know why. Even now people who run around with, with Confederate flags, you you lost real bad. Like it real wasn't hard. even and- close. <laughs> You, you lost real bad and and guess what guess what you probably wouldn't have made it anyway fighting in that let's be real mr xbox so and many monster of y'all drinking. Died. yeah xbox monster drinking asses you you wouldn't have made it wouldn't because made they it. was hungry they were starving they were low-key like we gonna we eat talk about bomb. sherman's march to the sea like yeah like because you think the union was playing fair they were not no like they were going through and they were burning oh 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 you don't want to oh you still we're gonna slash and burn so there goes your cotton there goes your tobacco there goes your corn there goes your your fields of anything food related there goes your cattle you wouldn't have made it like you wouldn't have made it you wouldn't be you would not have made it and let's be real they're gonna take your property anyway yeah, and they they was taking they was taking your property and taking your wives like it was doing all types of just ruthless shit. Yes, hence why at the end they turned old boy's land into what the fucking cemetery. Yep, it's a cemetery now. It is. We're, Arlington we're... is a Confederate fucking general's former land. Because <laughs> yeah. um, they was putting their dick on the table, I just yeah, had yeah. to say, like, you, you, yeah, like, what you gonna do? Right. You, you lost real bad, like, real bad. And now, you like, we got to take y'all back. We gonna yeah. do it in our way. Like, that was real rude about it. But June nineteenth is the day that the soldiers made it to Galveston, and then yeah. proceeded to tell them. By the way, are you enslaved people? Yeah, free. Yeah, free. Um, however, free. I got qualms. I got qualms. <laughs> Michelle got- knows I have qualms. Yeah. However, you all need to know it as well. One, just to get started, the telling them that they're enslaved people or their slaves were now free, free to men, as they put it right yeah that was number That's three what, on the docket yeah that it was done by the general order number three right given by general granger how it was number three what were the other two i have not been able to find them if y'all can find them send them to me i would love yeah, to know i want to know who has access to the library of congress to figure it out yeah i'd like to know because were these things done in order of importance or like, what were the other two things that were just so important that we had to say? But the annals of history don't yeah. don't say none about them. Yeah. The internet has no clue what number one and number two is. Right. We know that number four was saying whoever your Confederate le- leaders were and whatever their legislature was, yeah, all of that stuff is illegal. It's not legitimate. We ain't listening to them no more. Ignore. y'all capping y'all capping because it ain't real that was number four right. and i feel like that's an important thing to say yeah so what made it before those things number five was telling them that all of their grain and cotton now needed to go to the port of louisiana so that yeah. it could be oh, sent to new, new york. york and then maybe yeah. you'll get paid once it gets to new york like right it was about commerce so you handled money and law as four and five. What was one and two? What right? Like these are the things that are most important is y'all people free, your gov this government ain't shit, and give me all your goods. And it says it says the owner will be permitted to accompany his property, mm-hmm. but only, only if you've been to sell it right like so don't be like well i'm just gonna send it nope you gotta come with it you gotta you and your shit 
needs and, to go to New York. And you know what that is? That's the fucked up thing about that is I'm finna I'm not only am I finna take your shit, I'm finna make you watch right. me take your shit. Petty. You about to have to show up to see me take your shit and I may pay you. Right. May. It's fine. But also the other thing I have qualms with is the wording of general order number three. Cause it's not kind. It's not like they were like Hello, people of Galveston, Texas. We have won the war. We are here to help. All of you now have the personal rights and rights of property. You know, you like, no, they didn't do any of that shit. It was like, hey, guys, just letting you know, all slaves are free. Okay. Technically, that means you have equal personal rights in theory right they also were like any connection that you had as property to your masters no longer a thing you're not masters however you are now laborers and that's not your employer yeah like what (gasps) like let me you know what no you know what this needs to be read it it needs to be listen to this this is what she's talking about it says the freedmen are advised to remain quietly at their present homes Assholes. and work for and work for wages. They are informed that they will not be allowed to collect at military posts and mm-hmm. that they will not be supported in idleness either there or elsewhere. Absolutely. Which is basically them saying, don't come over here to the military. We're not about to feed and clothe you. And Frankly, don't be over here thinking you can be lazy because we're not down for that either. You're not going to be over here with that laziness. You're not going to be over there with that laziness, which is where that whole idea that black people don't want to work. I feel like continues to be like further entrenched into that. Like, Uh, like, they're fine with working. We are fine with working for wages. We've we've been working. That motherfucker. Right. Like, can I move around? Like, can I at least go to another plantation? And you done told me to stay in this fucking slave quarters that, again, ain't got no air. You know what I'm saying? I mean, AC wasn't a thing, but ain't nobody fanning me. Mm -mm. Ain't no, I don't have no ice or nothing. Like, and you're now telling me to be quiet after in this area with overseers with masters who may have been horrible to me right but you're telling me i'm free but sit sit down and be quiet so are we free like at this like first of all i got qualms <laughs> we ain't first of all we ain't free till we all free number Amen. one and number two fr- freedom freedom cannot not be given like this because freedom is like free from conditions free right. from like restrictions right they just they came with nothing but restrictions yeah nothing but restrictions and conditions like and who who was going to enforce that they was going to give them wages because i bet you 100 percent that when it first started out, they weren't getting no damn wages. They probably weren't. I promise you. Because these these owners weren't prepared to have to pay these people ever. Right. And you know, in the South, a lot of people, like a lot of these plantation owners were land rich and cash poor. Exactly. And Acres and acres had, and acres, but they had nothing to show for it. Right. And they had definitely just lost their most precious resource. Absolutely. Like, I heard this one person who was trying to defend the Confederacy. First of all, you're wrong. There you go. Correct. First. Let's, <laughs> let's start there. But, you know, I listen because I'm trying to be better about cussing people out. And and I want to be able to have a dialogue, you know. I don't want to talk to you, so good for you, because I don't want to talk to him. Right. (laughs) They were like, you know, 
the, y'all act like everybody had slaves. Slaves were expensive. Slaves were a commodity. And, you know, my family couldn't afford to own slaves. <laughs> you do realize you're talking about people, right? Right. First you know of all. why they were a commodity? They were human beings. Let's start there. And the more expensive they were, it was typically because they were younger, able to reproduce, and could do hard work and labor that you didn't want to do, white people. And yes, they were expensive. Not everybody afforded, could afford to leave, own a slave. But people treated owning slaves like owning Lambos. Just because yeah. you can't afford it doesn't mean you don't want one. Right. For 100%. And also, like, that's a myth about, like, sl slave, like, slave owning enslavement was more prolific than people like to think about. Right. Not everybody had them, correct. But, like, they were, they were abundant. They were abundant, and I mean, you might have a plantation where they got 300 enslaved people, but you might also have, like, someone who they own a shack in a small plot of land, but they have a nanny, a wet nurse. Wet nurse, a maid. A maid. A cook. Yeah. Yeah. Or like a, a farrier. This is this is it is Joe's job to push the ferry at night. Yeah, or, or dive like, it down the river. Right, like so that I can take a nap. Yes, just every every job or task that needed to be done that was unpleasant. In the South, the answer was enslaved labor. Right. Grave diggers, slaves. I mean, just going just gonna to put it out there. But yeah. <clears throat> we're going to get off of what's, what, what I had qualms about. <laughs> just so, saying. Yeah, so. It's fucking rude. <laughs> it is it's rude, but like so... They, they, there was the general order number three, and then we're like, yay, woo, woo. And so, once again, once this the, happened in 65, 18 June 19th, 1865, right? And so, this they, they came in like, oh, yeah. General order number one, whatever it was. Order number two, whatever it was. Oh, yeah, by the way, y'all free. Right? Just letting you know. And so, and you remember they told them to remain quiet. That's not what happened because, you know, first of all, Next. black people <laughs> have all, right, first of all, black people have, have always and probably will always love a good party. Mm. So Celebrate the, out loud. That's what we're going to do. And so they immediately begin to celebrate with prayer, feasting, song, and dance. Absolutely. Okay. As so, they should. As they should. Shit. Although I'm also trying to figure out why one more and more killing of slave owners. Because I feel like. I feel like there should have been a run on it. But yeah, you know, like you know, the whites banded together. Yeah, I mean, well, uh, yes, yeah. I'm pretty sure the same way. If 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 white people had to come in a black neighborhood, they never come by themselves. Correct. <laughs> you know they. You know they don't. It's at least two of them. Right. But so. So then the first official celebration was the following year and it took right. place in Texas. And so the original things that they would do would be 
prayer meetings, singings of spirituals, and the celebrants would wear new clothes as a way to like represent their newfound freedom. So like this was kind of like a new year celebration. You yes. know what I'm saying? I'm brand new and I'm, not, I'm brand new. I'm brand He he washed me clean. I am brand new. Right. Um and so within a few years Black people in other states started celebrating it. So it became like an annual tradition. Mm -hmm. And um, and this is not kept to be on. confused with like the phenomenon that is like watch night. Yeah, watch this night is, is something completely different. Completely different. Watch night. I th what, what is watch night? What is it about? It's the new year. I, it is something to do with slavery. It's a reflex, reflection of like them coming into their first new year after being free but it's it literally happens on like december 31st yeah which is where you get like the peas and the greens and all of that that yeah. i never do in time oh, oh i'm so bad with it that's why i'm always i'm always poor yeah they went to the churches on that last night but, before they were free uh, and no, stayed no, up no. all night but guess what? what? No, no, no. I mean, yes, but I'm, I thought actually, it was right. <laughs> yeah, on, but it happens on December thirty first. But what it was was enslaved in eighteen sixty two. So mm -hmm. guess what? Enslaved and free African Americans gathered, many in secret, to ring in the new year and to await news that the Emancipation Proclamation had taken effect. There we go. I knew it was something to do with slavery. I couldn't tell you exactly yeah. right. So, so that's what we were, we were wait, waiting and watching that night for the news of freedom. Beautiful. Because of course of, we were. Uh, of course. I mean, because our religion tells us, you know, you pray right. and wait for something to happen. Um, but again, in true white man fashion, the Emancipation Proclamation had happened September 3rd. Yes. Or no, September 22nd, 22nd of 1862. Yeah. yeah. And these mm -hmm. people were waiting in December for it to take effect. Yeah, like, like, and I mean, maybe, like, you know, I don't know, M maybe the, 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 the news was, oh, yeah, they wrote it, but it's not going to take effect. Like, sometimes we get new laws, but they yeah. don't take effect until the new year. Yeah, I, I'm or, pretty sure that's what it was, like. It's like it's like a it's like insurance policies. <laughs> yeah, you have to pay that first month or the, a couple and, of months before. Right, and then they'd be like, "All right, I guess you can use your insurance." <laughs> I guess I guess you you serious about it now, huh? Right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So the celebrations have continued in the U.S. Right. Um, and they typically have like prayer, religious services, speeches, um, family gatherings and picnics, festivals, mu mu music, food, and dancing. There we go. There we that go. Was you good. was going to get there. I believed in you. Yeah. Yeah. My, my, my mouth was trying to say music and food at the same time. Music. Yeah. <laughs> but so like. Juneteenth became a state holiday in 1980. So listen to how long it took to become a state holiday. And in Texas only. In Texas. And let's talk about how it's not a national holiday. Absolutely. So just other states started was like, hmm, that's a good idea. We're going to make Juneteenth a holiday too. Right. So it took over 100 years for them to even acknowledge it in the state that it happened in. Right. So keep that in mind, y'all. Because America. It's still not a national holiday. There is a big push, especially after last year when half of, you know, half the world got woke. Half, half, not even half the world. Like a quarter of the whites decided they were woke last year after the heinous killing and murder of George Floyd. Yeah. Coupled with the numerous killings and murders of other Black Americans like Breonna Taylor and Ahmaud Arbery in the face of white people when they had nothing to do but watch. You know, they had, it was the pandemic. 
it was just sitting at home. What do you do when you're at home? You get on social media, you get on the internet, you watch television, and every five seconds you kept seeing somebody get killed. Yeah. And so naturally the whites wanted to do something about it for a little bit. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> along with people doing things like wearing kinta cloth and kneeling in the freaking March capital building. Yeah. All that but, stuff happened. Right. But, but in the you midst know, of it, yeah, like people decided that also they were going to care about Juneteenth for the first time. Yeah. And what? so it, mm-hmm. I know, understand. So it became a thing like, what the fuck is Juneteenth? And if you didn't grow up with me, like me, celebrating it and knowing right. about it, it's a, I realized that there were a lot of people of color who didn't know anything about this. So right. it's, it's gained it's gained more um, prevalence. Right. And, how, and however you And as somebody who didn't necessarily grow up with it, but learned it later in life. I didn't learn it last year. I learned it before then, but. Yes. She said, <laughs> I'm, I, I might be new to this, but I ain't but that new. I ain't this. that new to that. It was, it was some years ago that I learned about it, like many. But I did find out there were people in my own circle who didn't necessarily know yeah what what it was about yeah and you know that's okay we know that america is great at suppressing what they do not want people to know about or think about and you know it's not exactly the greatest look that people didn't even know that you know enslavement was illegal when you know until like years later also nobody likes to focus on the part of american freedom where not everybody was free but you know or the fact that you know america's not great for everybody nobody likes to talk right about that. that that doesn't fit into the myth like the mythology of this nation right you know what i'm saying where this thought of because we're supposed to be the place where you know all your dreams can come true if you just work hard we're the we're the upstart who rebelled and so we're all about freedom and all this stuff but really a really specific section of people just how it was always intended let's be honest yeah (laughs) and i am grateful that you know thanks to things like the 1619 project and Thanks to, you know, so many people caring about what what's going on with Black America to, you know, the people pushing for critical race theory to be taught as much as possible. These things are coming to light. These, you know, occurrences throughout history, these big points throughout history are coming to light because you always have to think about like what I used to tell students when I used to teach is like history was very real for the people who were living it yeah it was very like intense and crazy if you were living back then it's the same way that we will talk about what happened in 2020 in the summer of 2020 like it's an epic freaking tale it's why we will talk about COVID-19 like it was literally a pandemic and there was pandemonium in the streets because there was like (laughs) but I'm sure in 20 30 years students gonna be reading in a textbook and be like dry (laughs) yeah they're gonna be like or the other thing they're gonna be like well clearly the solution was to do xyz but it's easier to make that type of judgment when you're removed from it you know what i mean exactly exactly good point michelle but you know i i do commend the work i mean i am sorry if you live in a state like ours where they are actively trying to destroy the work of you know people like the or organizations like the 1619 project or like you know those organizations who are pushing for critical race therapy or therapy theory where we probably need that probably needs to be a thing too like man give everybody (laughs) therapy that should be a right but 
just saying. But, yeah. like, you know, if you're in a state like ours, like the state of Georgia, where they made it literally illegal to teach this shit, like... Even though, you know, critical race theory, like, what, what, what they are fighting and what they're calling it, two different things. Two but very different I digress. Things. I digress. Two... <laughs> very different things because anybody who has read like just the bare minimum on Instagram about critical race theory can be like "Mm, what you guys are talking about is very different (laughs) if you if you listen to our our episode from um, last semester where we were talking about women I talked about Kimberly Crenshaw Mm mm-hmm and we she sure did. One, yeah, she's one of the proponents of critical race theory. And if you listen to me talk about it, I mean, it's not a great explanation, but goddamn, it's better than what they talk about. It's better than what they're trying to say it is. Because right. okay, this ain't that and that ain't this. No. Um, but, you know, and even when I try, as Michelle knows, I have some more conservative coworkers and what they have heard about what critical race theory is they were like well you know I understand they don't want to teach and I said okay let's talk about what it is and what it isn't yes and I was like do you feel they should not teach you know bare minimums about the atrocities I was like let's be real I I taught in like I taught I've seen some of these books I've seen history books that talk about World War II without talking about internment camps. How can you? Like, that's the thing. How can you? How How can can you talk about World War II and never mention Japanese internment camps? You you can't. You shouldn't, but there are books that do it. And these are like regular, well-known curriculum. Yeah. Or you get a paragraph about it like a single paragraph to explain what happened for years even after world war ii was finished people were right in internment camps i mean we have we have I and mean, we've we've skipped quite a few things because we have we did not mention like you really can't have this conversation about the birth of america without talking about the like mass genocide systemic genocide of indigenous people absolutely you can't without talking Continual. about genocide Continual. even as they were giving enslaved people their freedom they were still committing horrible acts of atrocities yes against indigenous people right so you can't like if you're going to tell the story you the gotta tell it from story. as many like lenses as possible and so that that really is what part of what critical race theory is about. It's about like telling the whole story. It's about viewing our our world or our country first of all in the viewpoint of which it was it was birth. It was a thought that white men were superior. Right. And moreover that rich white men were superior. Right. Cuz not all the so, whites were treated equal either. No, because if you if you weren't the right type of immigrant, you could have been white. But if you were not the right type, it wasn't. You the weren't same. great either. Right? Exactly. And like those same coworkers will be like, "Well, you know, I think it never should have happened in the first place." Yeah, you're right. It should have happened right. in the first place. However, comma it did, and we can't talk about history without acting like it it did right you just can't, I, like i feel like so many of the conver- like so much of the conversation is like well i disagree with it in general like i don't think this should have been a thing great i'm glad okay. you do that is it, how it you was. should feel hopefully but like yeah. it did and to ignore that it did only diminishes the people that it affected in my mind yeah and I- all the people like all the nameless people unfortunately who lost their lives you know or who and like let's talk about it's a whole group of people and this is the real tragedy to me 
a lot of times it's a whole group of us we don't know where we come from no I can't I have not been able to figure out what country in Africa or what hunter gather group you know I come from I would love to we've been able to track as much as finding one of the last people to come off the boat we've even found the boat's name that's you great they, right but you know what they didn't keep dossiers no for enslaved people because let's be real who knows every who knows every cow that they have like to speak on who, it. who knows that bessie is the cow from stan the bull and daisy the cat like who, they're not paying attention who, right unless unless it's like a, a horse that has a really good bloodline you and all of a sudden we got their pedigree right it's it's a racket but that's neither here nor there you're absolutely right michelle like there's a whole subsection of americans been here for hundreds of years that cannot figure out where they came from so right. it's nice for you to be able to say well i'm french and blah, 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 blah. but it like i can't i and, can't say yeah that. like and you can say stuff like well yeah like here here is my great what's the woozy grandma who came over and signed on ellis island like here is her signature she came over here at this day at this time this year i i can trace my ancestors back to what um a plantation in virginia right right the the biggest thing i have from my history is when when that ancestor ran because they killed a the white man because that's what we did when they ran yeah (laughs) when they ran one of the things that they brought with them was an iron which why they decided to carry an iron um maybe for i mean i guess it would guarantee them they could do like laundry jobs they could become a laundress right and also it's a weapon oh it's a weapon I fought it. I almost broke my toe. Okay. So like that's the thing that I have like not like oh yeah, my 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 grandmother brought over this quilt from Ireland. Like no. Right. When my when my people, my people people came over here, it was them. Right. They most likely were even naked. Like it was them. Cuz they was were processed. Them. They were processed like cattle. And the fact that they made it it's was a blessing. Big, was a blessing, right? Yeah. But, you know, it's hard. But I do encourage you guys, if, you know, you're listening to this before Juneteenth, you know, look around. Many, many towns, many cities, many states are doing wonderful Juneteenth celebrations. Do them if you can. Join them if you can responsibly because, you know, the Rona is still out here. Put your mask on. Be social distance. Yeah. But also, you know, see what you can. And if you're listening to this and it's after Juneteenth, you know, the party don't stop just because one day, you know. No. Growing yeah. up, June 19th meant a very different thing. It was a day of celebration, but it was my parents' anniversary. It was my brother's birthday. We was celebrating a different thing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and let me tell you something about my family. We celebrate t- Juneteenth, but you best believe we also celebrate Fourth of July, like Independence Day. Same. Same. Because guess what? You're not gonna tell me that I'm not damn American. Because guess what? My people bled into this earth, into this land, 
blood, sweat, and tears, done fought for this land, done died on this land, done tilled this land. I yes. get to celebrate every American, everything if I want to. If I want to. Happy right. National Hot Dog Day. Yep. Come on, bitch. <laughs> Shit. I want my free donut National Donut Day like I yeah. want it all I want it all cause you know like like Riley on the boondocks that you gonna pay what you owe and since we aren't getting reparations the least you can do is shut up when we are celebrating Memorial Day Veterans Day whatever we celebrating right and for those who, because, you know, there are those who are like, well, you guys want to talk so much about how America wasn't great for you. It's still not great for me. Yeah. Hence why last year we was talking about how many people was being killed by the police. So loud. We're still talking about it. Just the rest of America. Is. Yeah. Um, it's still going know. on all the time. Yeah. It's the performative wokeness. Those people are tired now. But right. We we don't have the luxury to put it down. I don't I don't get to put it down. It's why I was looking at people when people were looking at me crazy when I told them I just need a break. I'll be out there for the next march. Last year, and they was looking yeah. at me like, "What do you mean, bitch? I've this ain't my first go around. This is my life." Like I understand you're just now getting taken up the mantle. But for us who've been here for years, shut up. <laughs> but like, as much as I get to be upset with the things America has done, as much as I get to be critical of America, I get to celebrate America as well. Because yeah. bitch, that's my right. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's my right. And I mean, it, black people, people of color, are some of the most American people because we were out here fighting and dying for this country. And now I'm talking to like the service people who were fighting and dying in Vietnam only to come right. home and be treated like shit, or World Wars only to come home and be treated like shit, or being treated like shit right here in service. Yeah, right like, here. Right here. Like, you know, my grandfather was fighting for his right to vote while also being a police officer, while also having already fought for this country as an enlisted member of the military. Right. You know, for families like like mine, families in the South, who the only way out was military, for a lot of for a lot of the the members. Mm -hmm. Like I can look to my my family alone and count several who have given their lives to military service mm -hmm. and still turn around and look at them and be like you still gonna get called nigga I watched my dad get called nigga in a uniform not thank you for your service like called him a nigga to his face But you know, we're supposed to. It was a hard ER. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. And but then, but then we want it. We're supposed to be. We're supposed to remain quietly. You In know, your homes. Yeah. Remain quietly where you are, and we will not to tolerate laziness. Right. We. If we want, you won't talk about laziness. How lazy is it? And I'm sorry, this has always been my thought, but how we lazy? When you were so damn lazy, you you tried to get the indigenous people to do it, and you killed them. And then mm -hmm. you was like, you know what? We should do. We should go to a whole nother place and get a whole nother set of people to do this. They seem you know, to make it. You know how lazy you gotta be. Mm mm. Mm mm. It's, so. it's a special breed. It's a special breed to literally steal human beings, bring them back. Well, or bring them to a different place. To, to first to force them into lo labor. And then say, you're lazy. Right. And then critique their idleness. What the fuck? Out of your minds. Right. Now, again. 
Not all white people. Absolutely. But, 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 but. Not, but we talking about the ones people. that did. We're talking about the ones that did. And you know what? Watch your mouth because you didn't own, your family didn't own slaves, but you benefited. No matter what. You benefited. You benefit from being white. It's, it's the reason why you get to look back at the 60s with fondness. Yeah. You get to look back at the 70s with fondness, the 80s with fondness, the 90s with fondness. And typically, African Americans look back at the 60s and think about the killings of Dr. King and the marches and the civil rights movement. We look at the 70s and we think about the amazing number of people who were being drafted from black and brown communities to be put yeah. in a war they did not deserve to be in we look at the it 80s and we think of the crack epidemic we look at the 90s and we think of the watts riots yeah so and can. we look at <laughs> and we look at yes right and we look at yesterday at the fact that high rates of covid in our communities and not enough places for us to be treated. Absolutely. Look at yesterday where we are still being disproportionately targeted by police, where we're still disproportionately in prison systems because you have created a pipeline to prison systems. Like yeah. it's the school to prison pipeline. Like right. that's that's what it is. Right. It's but again, my family fights and dies for this country has fought and died for this country my my family still fights for this country if if shit was on the line i would probably fight for this country who girl you better than me because i ain't doing it i thought about it i was 10 seconds from jump, jumping in i thought about it for like i was in seconds. the office i took the tests <laughs> like, yeah like you were there i was just trying to figure out if this was the way I wanted to go to college like I <laughs> no like I was there it was post-college like I was about to be in the office however comma not even about to be I was literally talking to a recruiter however comma it's because of people like my family members it's because of these military service members that I am allowed to be critical of this country yeah that's the whole point for us to be able to say, hey, y'all, we could be doing better. Yeah. And I think one of the things that makes people is making people so upset about this thought of like critical race theory being taught in schools is that people don't want to be don't want to feel guilty. Right. People don't want to feel like they're responsible. And at no at no time am I telling the white person that was born on the same day as me that you are responsible for the evils of slavery not saying not at that. all it's Hell, impossible. not even the person who was born on the same day as my mama or my right. grandmama right for that matter like baby i know you ain't do it <laughs> you because you were un unless unless you were like a time jumping racist time lord like you ain't do it i, I want to see that. that movie though <laughs> i do i do racist not want time lord. <laughs> i do not want to see that movie i do i think it would be absolutely heinous oh yes yes it would be absolutely heinous that's it's like would it be so bad that it's good i don't know i probably couldn't get past the fact that you like have all this <laughs> Did you just call out Hellboy? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It wasn't that bad. It was bad. I, <laughs> I mean, I haven't seen it, so sure. I could. <laughs> Hellboy 1 did not need a sequel. It wasn't good enough for a sequel. And yet, you did it anyway, guys. Man, the America. algorithm told them it, <laughs> the algorithm told them that America likes blowing up shit. And that's true. We like, that's, we like that's to true. see... We like to see shit blow up in movies. We like That's to see half naked. Still shooting off fireworks right now. Now. Memorial Day is not even a holiday where you shoot, shoot fireworks. fireworks. <laughs> Memorial Day is about the 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 soldiers who never got out of their uniforms. Like, uh, 
That's like you're missing the point. <laughs> like I'm sorry. You no, like seriously. And they still they they gonna shoot fireworks until Fourth of July, and then they gonna shoot they fireworks gonna do it until more. Labor Day. Yes, and then they gonna shoot some more. God damn, <laughs> we're not gonna be free from fireworks until like Halloween, and I'm mad. <laughs> Cause they be doing some big ones over here. It, so you know, I you don't know. Not big need ones. military grade fireworks. <laughs> you do not. And in my neighborhood, I'd be like, "So you spent all that money on these fireworks that I can see over top of the buildings, like in the air?" Girl, I do not live in a nice enough neighborhood for you to just be blowing money. Right, oh, giant you, fireworks looking like almost damn Disney gray fireworks, and this is not an amusement park. Right, you over here acting like you are SunTrust Park or Truist Park, or whatever the fuck its name is. It's, You're not. No, and if I wanted to, if I wanted to live near that, I would. And some of us don't want to live near it, and they do. And, <laughs> yes. <laughs> So, you know, if I wanted to live back at Disney, guess what? I would have stayed my ass in Florida. Right. But didn't. Because I didn't want to be able to tell the time based on which fireworks show was going off. I'm tired. (laughs) It's loud. (laughs) So loud. loud. It'd be like, you'd be thinking like they're done and then you'd be like, boom. Fuck. Y'all. It's that has 10 to be, 30. Shut up. That has to be hell for some of these people. Like people who have military related PTSD. These niggas don't care. <laughs> I know they don't care, but you okay. know Fl- Florida is a is a snowbird state. Like, mm-hmm. like it's one of the number one retirement. Snowbirds don't places. live near. They don't live near. No, they they live out. They live out. They don't live near. Because let's be real. If I'm a snowbird, I'm not walking around Disney. No. Or the Universal. No. Or the SeaWorld. I'm not walking around there. It's too busy and it's congested. And it's expensive to live over there. Like, it is. you see, it's expensive over there. It is. But, you know whatever we've gotten way off topic anyway go celebrate juneteenth however you can and if you can't you know there's plenty of other black shits you can celebrate throughout the year yeah and i mean there are a lot of virtual things Mm -hmm. you Mm -hmm. know do some virtual tours you know also don't just you know relegate yourselves to the blacks you know go go celebrate some indigenous holidays or learn about them at least learn about them don't learn about them first don't Don't just go over and be like i want to celebrate yeah be like hand me your maraca first of all that's racist and it's not a maraca (laughs) (laughs) right (laughs) same thing you know hispanic americans asian americans learn about their history yeah the, the point is and this is my takeaway for when we talk about things like this. There's so much more to the history of this country than what you are reading in your textbooks. And please understand that history, the, the books of history are written by the winners. Mm-hmm. They're written by the people who are in power. Right. Right. So go find, like, go find other sources. Question things. Don't just and just don't, be a sheep. Right. <laughs> and don't just only look for sources that reiterate what you already think. Yes. Look for some opposites. It's the reason why I sit down with people who be like, well, my family, fuck you. Yes, do I want to say fuck you the whole time? Yes, but I need to listen to their point of view because sometimes even a broken clock is right twice a day, you know? Yeah. 
occasionally they drop a gem yeah and occasionally occasionally it causes you to to think about or to to think more clearly about the thing you support yeah and i encourage people think critically Mm -hmm. start using your brain for more than just consumption think about what you're you're letting in think about the like importance of these things at question well why is this and look do your own research too don't listen to me right just well i said a bunch of words but like yeah i'm sure i I got something wrong at some point (laughs) right like we really want you to listen to us but please don't take us as gospel either like michelle wants that so bad (laughs) (laughs) i'm just saying like go go like don't 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 let one voice or one source be your bible absolutely don't let your bible be your bible (laughs) no i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm gonna piss somebody off i'm sorry i keyed i keyed but we are we are already on the fringes what are you doing sorry (laughs) you're gonna be like these weird lesbian ass these goddamn un-american ass no but (laughs) but no seriously like michelle is completely right don't take if you are only listening to one voice one you're not listening to your own and two you're not necessarily forming an opinion you're we just regurgitating giving, exactly we're giving you information there is plenty of information out there about it luckily we live in a time where the internet is a thing the world wide web is a great resource we did so great you add in an, an, an h or it's whatever the webs the, no say you said how'd you say well right world wide web so many h's <laughs> Here's the thing. I definitely went to Best Buy the other day and did not try and fix myself. I definitely was referring to things as the World Wide Web and the interwebs. And at one point, I was just like, fuck it. Just tell me what to do, sir. (laughs) He thought I was funny. Thank God. Because he could have thought I was a horrible human. He probably thought both. Let's be real. Anywho, we're going to get off your face. Wait, we're, wait, <laughs> wait. We were not on anyone's faces. We were in your face holes. We're gonna get out of your face holes. We're gonna get out of your out of your ears. You've been listening. You, we need. We're gonna talk about anatomy <laughs> because you. Here's our face holes. Yes, but don't say it that way. It sounds, <laughs> oh my god. I don't know what more you want from me. I was correct. (laughs) Yes, but you know how like on some standardized tests, you have answers that are more correct than others? Yes. (laughs) There was a more correct way to say that. Well, I couldn't think of the name. So you got face holes. We're getting out of your face holes. And I've been Drea. Oh, Lord. Yeah, she's been Drea. I'm Michelle. I need a drink. I mean, you can get one because we're done with Life 401. Advanced shenanigans. (laughs) We'll see you again next time, guys. (laughs) Bye, Bye, everyone.